there are many paths to enlightenment and some of us choose love and here at IHP you get to choose if you want to open up your heart and also look at it within yourself and that means you get your zero one year old on track so here at IHP we work with those who are empowered in the 5d mystic collective way you don't have to be a mystic but 5d is christ consciousness so you are a person who wants to use your prefrontal cortex and your body as your home and your home home independently from if there was not a child-centric environment you know you want to get to your earned secure attachment at the very bare minimum and have actual loving relationships so knock knock who's there love are you sure are you going to stick around or are you going to be a negative human being who thinks that humanity sucks and basically don't do any of your educational I'm pseudoscience lady, but I'm attachment trauma informed. So I don't do spiritual bypassers or mantles of mental health. And whether they're a spiritual bypasser professional or mantle mental health professional, that will mean that they're unhealed. So their zero one year old doesn't have an owner. So I will notice that they have an adaptive child and or maladaptive child pattern. Enlightenment done with love means that I'm a one year old and a three year old with no shame. There's no shame here. Never, ever, ever. No guilt, nope, because I don't do the lying thing. I have integrity. So I'll tell you honestly what I think, and then when you get sensitive because you got a chip on your shoulder, I'll wonder why are you sensitive. You told me to tell you what I think. I told you. And then when you grow up and you keep on doing it, I just learn how not to tell people what I think, except for the ones who are just as much integrity as I am. And so they tell me to my face things, and they're men and women. And days, I don't have days, but I know of grown human beings who don't do gender stereotypes. So they're conscious lovers. And so when knock, knock, who's their love? Are you sure? Yes. Okay, how am I going to know you're, you're it? Here's sad guru for you. If you're concerned about the world, the first thing you need to do is transform yourself into a joyful being. So that's how I'm going to know. It's that you don't bring me your moods ever, not just sometimes, ever, because you talk about all of that which happens. Here's Ron Siegel, Psych D. If we cannot express or aren't expressing our true feelings, it's not going to be a genuine relationship. Exactly. And then wait, wait for it, because I like to integrate human, spiritual, and spirituality elements. These are subject matters. I create my own vocabulary. This is my IHP community, the content creator, podcast host. And I, if you want, will be honored to be your mentoree and or consultant and or life coach, however words you want to use, but to help you to be yourself with the inner growth mindset and my lovely toolkit. I'm a Reiki master. I'm an Akashic record reader. I'm also a tarot card reader, but don't come to me for entertainment on that when we're doing personal development. Yeah, I already have those people and they don't go into the land of the living. They stay Pinocchio with the wooden body because they don't choose to do the tone thing and learn how to love themselves first. They choose to say, I know I know love, based on Venus, a goddess of May, who tells me, ladies, ladies, come on over. Come on, come on. Oh, let's get the gentleman over here too, just so you know what love is not, okay? And how those people, they all need to either go to good therapy or they're going to keep on dating other Pinocchios and stuff like that. It's okay. You don't have to adhere to anything. They don't know secure attachment. We do, okay? What is love? Love is that you know how to regulate your nervous system, safe haven. Thank you, Stephen Porges. Oh, and secure base. Go out into the dangerous world and not be a misanthropist. So people who hate, dislike, and mistrust all humanity or just any time, I want nature. Well, go, there it is out there. I want humans. I, I want nature too, but I'm going to choose to be with a human because, you know, I want to live. And they talk. I also like to be um, entertained. And I can entertain, not in any of those uh, ways that are basically not interesting to a person who likes physical safety. So I know of the medieval times and torture and torture chambers, and no, none of that is attractive, not even a little bit. It's not even arousing, to say the least. It's kind of like, what the heck? Transgenerational trauma, cultural trauma, our ancestors' trauma. I ain't talking about aliens from anywhere. No, I'm talking trauma, T-R-A-U-M-A. I'm not stigmatizing. I'm just saying it how it is. Your sympathetic is not your Social engagement, you don't want your social engagement system? Cool beans, go and be in sympathetic. I know what happens to modulated embodied self life. You're in distress, I'm not. Your body is consuming a lot more than my body is. Let me think of how many ways I can present to you that's not love, that's actually visceral. And Stephen Porges explains why visceral, mm, ding, 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 not a very good bell. 
And in fact, when I go out there and see, so Venus, a goddess of May, informs women of something that I'm like, really? I, I knew of that by the time I was 18 because I did get broken up by my teenage boyfriend at 19, excuse me. And, you know, we did decide that we would come together before marriage. And I was being raised with the fact that they thought that actual teenagers would listen to adults like that. I knew that there were smart adults who said, we know you don't listen to anyone. So here, let's prepare you in a smart way. Let's give you sex education. Let's make sure you know things. And the ones who want to ignore this, well, let's just put it this way. They're delusional and they must forget however old they were. But then again, I have met women. I have met women. And you know the way that they told me how they were dying to get married? It was more of, since I haven't tried it, <laughs> I really, really want to, and I'm thinking, you don't really realize what you're talking about and what year it is, do you? Wow. And in the meantime, you're telling me about all the good deeds that you've done and committed for your uh, significant other, and you've done everything except for the one thing, and you're like basically lying to yourself. But you know what? Let me not say anything about that, because I can see you're committed to your idea of how to make it work for you. So does anybody know about when you try to excuse yourself for something, but you know you're doing half-assedly everything. Yeah, so you can't keep one foot in and one foot out. For a Jacob personality, that is. Meaning, I'm going to notice. I'm going to leave it alone because, you know, it's none of my business what you choose to do. I'm just saying, anyone notice that, you know, this is it is that integrity? Because a person like that thinks that they have integrity. Like a woman who will go and tell other women, how dare you hit on married men or allow married men to hit on you? And how dare you ruin families? And so they pick on the women, right? Uh, for the ones who pick on the men, how dare you? I'm thinking, why doesn't anyone want to adhere to what we now today have? It's so nice to be a consensual, non-monogamous woman. It's called polyamory. It is not unfaithfulness. It is saying, I love more than one man in a more than friendship way. And I accept that I love to love. And if you don't like it, it's okay. <laughs> There's a door right there. You don't have to stick around. I'm just a conscious lover. What can I say? Okay, so I never got fear-mongered. And this is where I actively think this is a disgrace to see 4D mystics out there and how they do shit. But I'm going to leave that one to the side right now. So enlightenment, the path, loss, pain, bliss, wisdom. I'm adding love right here. I didn't have a challenge with it. I learned forgiveness from the very same Jesus that I learned walked with all people. Do we know, do we remember who he walked with? I will not be specific because I'm a person who forgets regurgitation of material, but I'm pretty sure one of the people he walked with, and there's this book that I ended up reading because of all the controversy it made. And I'm like, why is this book making such a controversy? And then I kept thinking, because you know, when you hide the truth, you are telling me that you don't trust and the very same thing you want to tell me to believe in. When you talk about a spirituality guru as if it's a person who is unneeded or as if people need something to believe in and you don't hear yourself, I hear you with your cloak. And I'm thinking you're a hypocrite and you're a hypocrite and anybody who's talking about anyone who is a spirituality as if they shouldn't be because you are, it's, it's like seeing a child who's, oh, you took my candy. Okay, that's exactly what I, as an observer in Jacob's personality. I'm not picking a side. I'm saying you with a cloak will talk about people needing to believe in something. In the meantime, you're professing faith, FYI, because that's what you're bringing. And you're saying that a person who's a guru, who's also a faith, is to not be taken seriously. You, you really need to hear yourself. <clears throat> I'm going to use me. I was a four or five-year-old little girl. I forget the exact age. And I've, I've shared this story before. <laughs> So as all my regular viewers and listeners know, I'm a person who loves to share how great it is to have emotional depth. And so from that age, there's another incident and then another with anger. And then there's two professional situations that really caught me off guard, even though there was some mystic stuff that came up before it. That's why. But let me leave that to the side. As for romance, I don't do the let me get into your face. No, I'm, I'm very blessed. See, it's a very good thing. I've always been kept far, far, far away from any of those lovely human beings that I love to death in moments where it's a good thing that Maria gets to sit in silence in her brain and to calm down and leave it alone and then reset because the reality is Jesus taught me all about love. I love Jesus. 
the healer of all ages, Christ consciousness. So 5D land, it's all about love. And that's why enlightenment, the human way, it's really fun. Come on over. It's called you being a human being. <laughs> and it's called you being a good human being in here. So Ron Siegel, if we can't express or aren't expressing our true feelings, it's not going to be a genuine relationship. Most Cuscos don't realize that Pachas know when they are hiding anything. I, I noticed as a teenager. Um, then the part about uh, management, let's see, Sadhguru again, is not about throwing your weight around. Any fool can do that. It is about inspiring people to do their best. So I inspire you to be yourself. Now people say, why would I want to be myself? Because your one-year-old came expecting to get consistent contingent communication. If it got it like I did, then you know how to use your emotions. And you know how to alchemize them when you get upset. That means that you know the truth. I'm not right or wrong. I'm not an adaptive child. I'm a human being called Maria. And so I can share a floor in silence as a three-year-old with a whole heart. Enlightenment, the human way. I'm a restorative embodiment, self-aware human being. You can be here with the woo-woo spiritual pseudoscience lady, but... If you do this, I don't want to do it. I want to like, now, well, then you got a, a Zen master who tells you all about laundry in here. I mean, I don't know. You got people say, you can't always be on. Wow. You're learning about the brain. How do you not stay on? I don't understand. Why aren't you taking care of your shame button? Your one-year-old. Where's the one-year-old? Why aren't you taking flight with all this educational information that you're distributing like you know what you're talking about and you don't embody wholeness yet? I'm wondering what's the deal. Don't you know what a flexible, adaptive, coherent, energized, stable brain is and bringing forth your sensuality and all? So long story short, my home, welcoming. My home, my mother. She let me be a three-year-old. That's why she was welcoming to all of my emotional moods. And you know what's nice about knowing Dan? Daniel, you're awesome. Is that at three years of age, I was already a differentiated self. That means my thoughts, my feelings, not my mom's. Which is why integrity is based on Maria's rule book, not on anybody else's. And my integrity is based on Jesus and God. And God taught me how to be humble. And I, you see this, this space? I got one lesson. I remember it. I remember it, God. Don't worry about it. Now I have to call you Akash and consciousness and all that other stuff. And I remember it's one of my relationships. As I did decide to allow a person who made me very clearly aware that they felt lesser than me, that I should allow them to become equal and I said to myself, as they were doing this manipulative tactic, which is not manipulation in the book of a person who knows what's going on, because I'm like, I know what's going on. I'm present. I'm attuning. I'm resonating. I'm trusting. I'm a piece of pure consciousness because I'm unconditionally loving. But what it is is that I'm a Maria self. And so you're not pulling the wool over my eyes because I'm a conscious person. As I'm interacting with you, I'm choosing by the minute how I'm going to behave with you because that's what I got taught because I have the capacity to have all my emotions here. And not to bring my mood, but to manage. This is what it's called to be self-aware. Accountable regulating. Panic attacks. Never gotten offline. I'm not flaunting it. I actually got yelled at by a lady who I was trying to help. And I'm thinking, what the fuck? Aren't you grateful that somebody's telling you how to get out of it? I also got a person who's trying to pick at a wound. And that was really yucky. And at the same time, upsetting in a way of I need to leave I'm having an active panic attack this human being is actually trying to get me to feel it more and I need time to recalibrate right now not this not what what is this and then Daniel Siegel explained to me what it is when somebody's enmeshing you or they're re-traumatizing and getting off of things with their own nervous system so imagine having the capacity because we all do as somatic empaths to perceive another human being's inner child their stuff and you're just thinking wow uh, but it's not in a way that it's like, no, it's more like this is not happening kind of thing in a really cool way. <laughs> I, I am not, I've not been taken off guard by anything. I'm, I met all of the unkindness <laughs> as an adolescent that I had to, to know that I know what I am and that's why integrity, my way, means I tell you what I think. I don't care your opinion. You can tell me what you think. That's the whole point. It's what it is. Genuine feelings. Tell me. Have the balls and the vagina and the, have the cojones to tell me. That, you see this space? Because I swear there are a very handful of people that know how to tell you what you think and feel in your face. <laughs> this is a very beautiful experience, by the way. I love the ones who have given me the honor to be a part of their herd and then to be able to have that actual exchange. Now, that is richness. And so I have those people and we are always blessed with people in life. And on that note, I was telling you a story. So I'm four or five, 
And I had just been recently taught, at least this is my, my brain remembers, about how you don't give a gift or a toy or whatever and take it back. So I'm, in the, I'm on these stairs. The image is this. I'm on the stairs. And A, for my mystics, come on over because this is how we close circles in life. Because this blonde little girl, I met her again, a different blonde little girl who did a different thing. But this time I handled myself. What I'm going to say is probably better. <laughs> and so I didn't have any more blonde little girls following me around because let me tell you a story. So I, uh, I have this little teddy bear racer in my in this hand in this hand and I have another toy in this hand I still remember this girl she's threatening me <laughs> she's saying if you don't let me play with one of the two I'm gonna take the bear racers what she wanted and I didn't want to give it to her <laughs> I pull her down the stairs by her hair I still remember her name <laughs> and I don't remember anything else I just know that I didn't feel that I did anything wrong she threatened me I got taught that that is not a good thing to do she was trying to take my toy and I did what I did. And then that was that. And I'm pretty sure I got yelled at. But when my mom tells the story now, she's like, I'm happy you, you, you defended yourself. I'm like, yeah, sure, whatever. I'm sure all you parents got, got into that one, How, uh, you know, and tried to fix the situation. But I also have a twin that I can think. So we fought like cats and dogs. And so I know all about repairing any type of debate because also I'm full of self-agency. I'm full of that type of uh, energy, and that's where motivation. So we all have the attachment category, and then that can be changing, and you can also just stay in a secure attachment because your self is yours. Solo self, narrative self, relational self, and your core self, well, your core self, but the heart. And so the core self is where I'm going to share you can get out of shame and into love. So enlightenment, again, the path, there's many paths loss, pain, bliss, wisdom, love is one of them, and it's not a ladder alone. It is something that when you are able to do this thing called unconditionally love and forgive the way I got taught it, you learn how not to cast a stone. My one moment of shame was where I learned that I was casting a stone with the words good or bad because I had the intent. You're bad because you're doing something bad, like a child. And then I said, oh, and I didn't do it anymore. And I said, anarchy. And the law can do the law. The law does the law. And so when you grow up expanding consciousness again, 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 you don't lose enlightenment. You don't turn off your heart. You keep it open. I chose that also on purpose as an adolescent because I said, why would I close it off? They don't know how to love. I do. <laughs> They're the ones who are unkind, unkind, not the other way around. I can choose to maintain my heart, body, value, body. It's a mental choice that you make. And then it's an emotional choice that you make. And that's why the inner growth mindset only works for people who have cojones, vaginas, all of whatever words you want to use. It means you can do emotions like any person and actually be a human being who grows up. Because when I see all those teenagers out there, you know what? So Venus, the goddess of May, with all these women laughing, and I'm thinking, are you all stupid? How, how the fuck are you laughing at this? How is this humorous? It sounds more like I'm with teenagers who don't know... <laughs> About the oh so if they fuck you then they don't marry you wow yeah no shit Sherlock the other dude who's trying to say oh they won't text you back because you know remember they're gonna feel disgusted contempt and shame after fucking you okay you think I feel like an object because I'm a conscious lover again consciousness in any way shape or form when you're saying I Maria Jacob personality have thoughts and emotions they don't rule me and they're not facts and I Maria engage in a coitus with another human being who's going to decide whatever the hell they want to decide not to mention that relationship love is easy for those of us who have healthy self-worth we're not trying to keep you are you in my pocket wait wait let me check do I need a cord? Let me get a leash on you. Let me pat you on your head. Let me make sure that I baby you to the death of you. This feels so small to a person who has empowerment. And this is why consciousness, this way that you will hear about it from your 5D mystic woo, is it? Oh, the depth of emotional experience if you get a hold of your restorative embodiment self. I'm thankful, Dr. Daniel. Thank you for being here. So he informed me that at the age of three, I'm a differentiated self. At the age of three, I also had the ability to tell the biological father of mine who called me three times my sister's name. At the third time, I'm looking at him and telling him, I'm Maria. And they always make fun of my grumpy face, and I don't try to hide my face. 
Why would I hide who I am from you? I'm going to want to talk to you. So that body language, our one-year-old comes with us, our two-year-old, our three-year-old, our four-year-old, our five, six, seven, eight. Now you can be the owner of that. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You can be an owner of all of your child parts. And those charged parts, you can then manage them. And then you can be joyous. And then you can be an open heart. So the reality is people don't want to do the work. They go to therapy and they say, ah, I don't want to journal or do mindfulness or meditation. People are fucked up. Why should I? Good job, Pinocchio. Keep going to that island. I think you're going to have fun with those ears. Okay, the point is... There's no stopping to where you can go. Now, if you choose consciously, let's say you choose consciously to stay in a one-year-old that has no secure attachment, but consciously means I, human being, X, Y, Z, D, F, G, have understood that with the category of blah, 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 I'm going to have unhealthy self-soothing mechanisms. I'm going to have this torture stuff. If I don't heal the shame, I'm going to have, you know, gut wrench. Okay, so I make a conscious choice to do something that is a pattern that brings me suffering because I don't want to do the work. I don't feel like it. I accept that I'm going to live this way and that I will risk potentially. Now you're going to feel a lot different when you're walking around the planet with your not secure attachment because you consciously chose the consequences and whatever it is of repercussions. So you can be integral or in, have integrity within yourself. And I'll use me. So I smoked cigarettes for a lot of years and I now smoke cigars because I got the opportunity to quit. <laughs> I was not trying to, but I knew it was time. I was trying to get down to three and I laughed because that's how the universe works with us. God, essence of life. When you're walking a walk and talking a talk, life is easy because you're blissful. It's because you have faith and it's because you are a whole, you're a one-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old. So I'm bringing to you enlightenment the human way. It is a journey with therapy for some who need it and then personal development for others who want it and then for you to continue it. And it's the most amazing journey that you'll ever find because here's another quote, Alan Shore, PhD. Trauma does not only lead to dysregulation, it also disrupts the emotional distance with other human beings. And then we're going to read some more of my lovely psych educators. Bezel van der Kolk, most trauma we see in our offices is interpersonal. It occurs in the context of attachment relationships. Then we have lovely Pat Ogden. Traumatized people often have trouble regulating by themselves, but they also have trouble seeking others and taking in the support and regulation of others. So a person who has no secure attachment has trouble with people like me and any unconditionally loving whole human being. Ron Siegel, Psych D. Nobody has an objective view. All of our views of reality are based on the accumulation of past experiences, most influenced by past hurts. When a person meets a person like me, a person will not necessarily be fond of me. I will be an evil bitch, an evil witch. Uh, I mean, for the people who are obviously being, uh, what's the word, can completely told that Reiki is, is yucky energy. It is what it is. Uh, the people of faith, of my faith, they know that I'm not part of anything that is evil. Also, there's a lovely Michael Stone scale. And his scale, he's a forensic criminologist. All these people in this evil box need a therapist. So the reality is anyone who's still demonizing humanity and says there's no goodness, they don't know about attachment or trauma. So let's let them know about it. That's why as a person who fears no inadequacy, because the only person I ever looked up to and still do is called Jesus. And he taught me. And God taught me how to be humble. In fact, the only person who knows what I think about the people who are still using that name is God. As I said, they're not humble. Look at them. In fact, they're 7 to 14 charming is what they are. Their grandiosity, the manipulation and the wool over the eyes. The reason they have a wool over anyone's eyes is because those people don't have a good therapist and they don't want one, by the way. You know how many people roll their eyes when I share with them the one to three? I find it hard to believe, Maria. Yes, keep finding it hard to believe because I find it hard to believe that you think I could make up shit from my brain. <laughs> like, do you think I'm learning it from, I don't know. I mean, I am a Chandler, so that's fair and square. But anyways, here's uh, Bezel again. Bezel van der Kolk. He has the book, The Body Keeps the Score. It's a really great read. And also Robert Sapolsky's Determined. I can't wait to read that one. 
We have Stephen Porges, but that one's a lot complex. So if you are not a person who likes to read in-depth material, anyways, let me get back to Bezel. There is more and more evidence that dissociation is caused by dysfunctional attachment. You don't have somebody who looks at you and picks you up and responds to you when you are in distress. So you learn to deal with your misery by shutting yourself down. And there are people that come from homes that have childhood neglect and abuse, physical, and they both are equally unhelpful to the development of their right mode of the brain. They can heal. All people are healable because nobody's fucked up or broken. That's a teenager attitude, and the teenagers are adaptive children who wear mantles. And they prance around with the pain point, and they pick at it, and they decide that with that pain point, they come up, and they get to be braver. Now, they're going to heal that way. I'm not here for those people. I'm here for the ones who want to live with the heart. It's not about pain. It's about love. And pain is actually only about physical stuff. The pain that people feel when they're suffering, it's called the temporal junction. You can get out of rumination. You get to get... Alert, 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 limbic system, come down. We're not in any physical danger. Oh, let me put that into practice some more. Yes, keep practicing, keep practicing. You're going to get here, come on. That's what little choo-choo train could do it. You can do it too. Bezel again, traumatized people tend to feel numb and not alive, and they can make themselves feel alive by exposing themselves to the same situations that caused their terror. So a person who's used to having unhealthy self-worth, meaning no self-worth relationships, they're going to go to a home, basically build a home. Come on in. Is it love that's in the door? Or is it a push and pull, dysregulated nervous system, people with low self-esteem and direct communication, passive aggressive, who are going to basically have what the movies make you think is what love is. It's not. And nobody has to become in this, uh, what is it? (laughs) Okay, so here's some attachment coaches as they share with their community what secure attachment is. You see this face? It's because I'm like, wow, you're coaches who are trying to get people to become securely attached, and you just use the word boring? (laughs) I I have laughter right now because you're telling me that being in your rest and rejuvenate, and so emotions of a sense of safety, of equanimity, of unflappability, of integrity are boring? (laughs) You don't know it. You don't know it yet. You don't know anything about the emotions, the depths of it, and that you're not alone in your body. Your zero one-year-old doesn't. Oh, I know all about not being alone when I'm alone. And that's the part of why angelic frequency, let's close it out with this. You maintain an angelic frequency if you're a 5D mystic because your third eye isn't looking at all, oh, you know what? I see everything out there. And when you have any vision, you're like, I No, the first thing your third eye is for is called your prefrontal cortex and you gaining mastery over it so that you can then maybe become a Jacob because that's the point of when neutrality strikes and you have duality. Are you going to keep doing neutrality? Are you going to stand around like Braveheart thinking you got a superhero cape, which is where we got the Elsa journey people. So they're using their third eye telling you they can see everything and anything. And then they use stories. I'm going to use different stories as I'm a channel or two, (laughs) a 5D beyond and I got to see a lovely 5D person online today. Okay, so thought, thought, light codes, light initiation, great teacher, awakening, divine magic. So I do get to be somebody who will be teaching, mentoring all of those of you who do one-to-one or the master class. That means you become a welcome home to yourself and to others, and you stay away from those people who call people demons or romanticize or basically the ones who don't want to do emotions. We don't need to be around moody people. We plead in activation, coming together, harmony in the heavens, resolution. We're people who are sciences and spirituality come together. We're people who don't dismiss what is a person like myself or others who know what they're doing because you'll notice who knows what they're doing. Basil van der Kolk again. When people are traumatized, certain movements have become unconsciously associated with danger or failure. So when you live in the world of sensory integration, you will see that most traumatized people get very frozen in their bodies. And we have this one too, Basil van der Kolk. Fundamentally, every part of the brain is affected by trauma. The right brain lights up more. That's over here. And that's where the emotions come up. And that's where I pick up on you. And the uh, left brain is shut down more. The left brain is a chit-chat, it organizes, and it's digital. And 
then the back of the brain is more hyperactive. That's because there's always, I'm, I'm hypervigilant and I need to protect myself. And so that safety behavior is on, attach, cry, collapse, submit, please appease, fight, flight, freeze, flop, drop. The front of the brain becomes less active. This is where Jacob is at. This is where you can scan. No, you do self, me, others. And the thing about the right and the left and the hyperactive is that people who have childhood trauma and they don't heal it, they will consistently look at faces with traumatizing charges. And so I don't have low self-esteem. So when I'm looking in your eyes, I'm a safe haven, secure base of myself. You look in my eyes and you have unresolved stuff going on, which is why when I started to learn about all this attachment trauma, I cried a bunch of times because I was like, I don't even know how many people did I trigger now. This is really upsetting in this moment. And now that I know that I don't want to look at people always in the eyes, if they're looking away, I make sure to respect that and to try and read body language and make sure to move away. Okay, Bezel again. Uh, he talks about therapists, but it's any person who's a safe haven, secure base. Let me let you know. So any of you who are already ruling with love, who are in the Enlightenment Soul Age Group, who are 5D mystics, so you have compassion consistently. And like the Dalai Lama quote, you know that you get to bring joy and laughter. And you don't give a shit about the asshole who says, how dare you in the face of all this suffering? Well, how dare you go to the Dalai Lama without learning who the Dalai Lama is and be reactive to the Dalai Lama? <laughs> I mean, reactive in that way. I mean, how dare you? Everybody has reactivity. I'm so sorry you had a reactive moment, but really, you didn't do your due diligence. So see, can we all be polite? We can try to, but at the same time, we can also all have an opinion. <laughs> and then we can all recalibrate. Okay, so what he's saying, a person can, for the time being, play the role of being an external observer sometimes, which is why a mentor, an educator, a coach, a consultant, again, a voice, anyone who you are with can be somebody who is going to be that observer. But if you have a person who's not secure, they're not securely attached, they don't have healthy self-worth, they're not leading with love, and <clears throat> they got trauma stuff going on, well, it's a whole other story. Uh, but he shares the real role of, and he's talking again about therapists, is to activate the internal self-observation part. And so again, a safe haven, secure based person is a person that if a person becomes aware of you and they're enjoying you and they are opening themselves up to their self, they become an internal self observer. But that's only a step one. Now that you observe, are you going to become the Jacob of you and say, my thoughts and my emotions are not facts. I'm going to talk about them and build genuine relationships. And I'm looking for a couple more quotes because there's some really great ones. Uh, here's Ruth Lanius, PhD, traumatized individuals often wear a mask, they smile, they pretend everything is okay, they are dressed very well, and nobody can see their pain. But it is so important to be able to tell your truth when you are traumatized. And in fact, that's why telling the story of what has taken place is very significant and important for a person. And here's where I want to read Ruth Lanius again. Traumatized individuals often wear masks, they smile, they pretend everything is okay. They're dressed very well and nobody can see their pain, but it's important to be able to tell your truth when you are traumatized. So it's similar to the other one we just finished reading. This one is also good. The pain is inside, but it's too scary to show the pain and too shameful to show that pain. So frequently traumatized indiv individuals walk around with a mask, and this is again Ruthlanius. And those masks, if they get to unmask themselves, it will be because they find a safe haven, secure base person to share that mask with. And when you're doing that, it's important that you have a healthy self-worth person. Because if you have a person who's not yet healed, they won't be um, that person who can help you get out of the trauma. So trauma is relational. Please remember that. And relationships are what can heal. I want to find that one. There's another one on the relational front. I think it was Patrick Tiahan that shared it. He's great for any childhood trauma who are looking for a therapist who has had childhood trauma himself. And on that note, I might not be able to find it for this episode. But um, there was something about relational and <clears throat> in relationships. 
once you become your observer, once you're aware of yourself, and obviously I'm talking to a bunch of you, so I don't know where you're at with your self-awareness, but if you have good relationship with the basic six emotions and you can talk about all of it with people, you're good. If you have no shame, means you're good. If you get agitated and you take ownership, you say, yeah, you know what? I was agitated. Let me uh, take some steps back. Again, you're good. If you can express your true feelings, then that's great. If you can't, what happens? If you can't express or you are not expressing your true feelings, it is not going to be a genuine relationship. Ron Siegel. And genuine relationships is what I've noticed. People who don't choose love, knock, knock, who's there? Are you going to stick around? Well, you don't know if you are if you don't have integrity. Integrity does not need shame. Integrity requires a person in 2024 to be aware that if you go around fucking anyone and you're feeling shame about it, don't do it. You don't have to bring in the biblical texts of you not having to do it at all. No, you get informed. You get understanding of the inner world. And so what I'm happy about is knowing that adolescents have good guidance because there's good trauma and attachment therapists. The ones who are <clears throat> still under the impression that spreading those uh, types of messages that are basically like the woman that I met, the, I've met a couple of women throughout my lifetime who, again, I share that, made me aware that they chose to wait till marriage <laughs> in order for any of that exploration and other stuff to come into the mix. And they're thinking that they did this thing and they kept integrity. And I'm thinking, <clears throat> are you in the medieval times? And then I'm thinking, well, yeah, their home probably is like that because there's other homes that I know that are like that. And so to close it out, I have women who have informed me that they have felt like objects to their significant other I'm going to put it nicely in an effort to respect those who will maintain their lack of loving relationships, thinking that gender stereotypes and ancient history is actually the way humans are because of man. And again, my brain, mm, I didn't understand it. And I was a feminist for a short time and I became a humanist on purpose. I'm now even more educated than I've ever been before. And I know that there's always going to be, at least for now, our lovely two groups. We got a group of academics. They chased Bezel van der Kolk. No, Daniel Siegel. I don't know about Bezel, but I'm sure he got chased down too. So when you have ego in the room and you got people who are non-bilaterally integrated, that's their inner child is not there. They're ruling with their left. Who knows what took place at their home? They, we don't need no demon story. You can see... Nightmare after nightmare after nightmare, we have a neuroscientist. His name is Patrick McNamara. He proves through the scans of your brain, unless you want to get rid of all technology, which is why, you know, the reality is there's just so many things I could say right now. I won't. We'll have plenty of time with other episodes. The fact that technology and science is deemed as monstrous is beyond me. I'm laughing in my asshole because I think these people think that I'm stupid. I'm okay with being stupid because I'm not smart about everything. I'm just like, where's your brain? Because the you're you're literally, <laughs> but we have physicists who are trying to use AI to prove reality doesn't exist. So I mean, really, right? And we just have a lot of different types of <laughs> people out there. Ron, where are you, Ron Siegel? Their past hurts are leading their way. Oh, so okay. I know I'm losing some of you. I'm going to conclude with the fact that these women, they stick to and stuck to their actual mono monogamous monoamorous possessive jealous ignorant relationships because of this shame thing from their own human herd from their own basically family and society knowing that that's not love and knowing that they are feeling really not great at all but that that is what I'm supposed to do because that's my role. Okay, I think I'm done with reviewing a bunch of different things that uh, no, unless you want to live in prehistory because that's the energy that I just got down my spine and I'm thinking of a uh, forest with a cave and just bullshit probably movies that people made up because I bet you our ancestors are nowhere near any of what deviated brains came up with and that still people want to say it's entertainment. You know who ruined completely movies for me? I was already on that track. 
that guru, I love you. You didn't ruin it in a bad way. As he shared with me how our superheroes, they just cut each other up. And I'm like, shit. I loved my action adventure movies and I got out of that one. I still love superheroes and now I'm thinking he's right. That's all they do is mutilate each other. What is what? <laughs> I'm not going to do this. <laughs> I'm just thinking there's, there's so much wisdom behind words of people. Oh, not. You know what? I'm not going to do the journaling and meditation because ah, people are fucked up. <laughs> No, 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 not for educated brains. No, no, we don't lack imagination. We got a bunch of education. The ones who lack the education, they got a bunch of imagination. And all I can say is if that's entertainment and being lame and saying people are fucked up is entertaining to you or you think that's true, or you feel that's true, I am going to raise my hands and just shut my mouth. I'm going to go now. So to my lovely viewers, welcome aboard. Anyone who's going to stick around. Enlightenment the human way and with love in the forefront. It's called, wow. We have a lot of things to chit chat about my lovely IHP community. So be back for more like share and subscribe. And I love food for thought. So if you have topics you would like me to discuss for the community overall, let me know. You can email me if you want to ask Maria. That's a paid subscription based model content. It's a, an opinionated columnist episode. So that you email me and that for now is only available on the audio version because we need to get to 1K. In fact, like, share, subscribe, spread it around so that people can like. Once we get to 1K, the membership opportunity, the number one will be where you can ask me food for thought for something that you're going through. Obviously, if you find that I can be of help. And then we have one-to-one -one mentorship and the master class is in the making. So you can write me because there will be a limited number of spots for the master class as well as the one-to-one -one mentorship because I'm one person. <laughs> and because the master class, I want it to be intimate and with people who care to do the work. And in fact, the commitment is a 12-month, very bare minimum because we are all one creatures of habit. Not only becoming self-aware, accountable, regulating your own observer requires your own dedication, but also the willingness to know that if we do need extra help, that we will reach out to external sources. My lovely good therapist that I know, that doesn't mean anything about our master class, but I'm saying you all will be treated one-to-one -one even in a master class. And I will take note of things that are important. That's what people do who care. They don't make it into sales pitch. They make it into, let me tell you who I am. Let me tell you what I know. And then, you know, you got a bunch of other pieces of information out there. Go and do due diligence. This is where, to me, it's common sense. And that's where some people remind me to not think of it as common sense. And so I try to make sure to expand as much as possible. I also look forward to working with my mystics, the ones of you who want on board. And to those of you who are mystics, I will inform you. I have noticed there are mystics that have DID and they don't acknowledge it. And I am not a person who is a liar. Integrity and upholding mental health and hygiene is of the number one equation. Personal development involves your inner and outer well-being. It's automatic that I would have gotten more educational material, in my opinion, because a professional who cares, marketing. I don't need to keep updating. There's new tools. I learn how to use them immediately if a client needs that. It's different with a human being because science builds new data all the time. It's not, they're, they're not making up the shit out of their butts, okay? <laughs> Stephen Porges is still working on his data building because it's not proven yet. And it doesn't mean just because it's not proven that it's not actually something that is already applicable. Okay, so sciences and academics and actual data is built in a specific way and you will meet the educators out there that are 5D who are bountiful with proactive advice. They have stories. Uh, they want you to stick around. They, they are not going to make it into sales pitch. They're not going to use a pain point to grab you in. They know what they're sharing and selling and offering and basically it's a product, it's a service, it's something that works for people who want to be there self. So again, uh, it's not trying to be a cheap shot is how I'm going to say it, even though that's not the correct usage. And you know, as we close on out, I'm going to use our lovely Dr. Daniel Fox. He's an expert in personality disorders and you can look him up on YouTube. He has a great buttload of exercises for free, all of this because he wants to help. And he is, he's helping the borderline community, narcissism community too. 
in one of his videos or two on narcissism, he did a little bit of a, I noticed it too. He did a bit of a sentence and his mannerisms and it could, it was very obvious that he was, I don't want to say playing to crowd, but any one of his community members, including myself was like, what's up with this? There's no compassion towards the narcissist. You're, you're, you're acting in a way that isn't human. And they had feedback for him. And the feedback was all very composed and it was very uh, well spoken. And it was simply, you know, we have gotten so much out of you being a human with us here. Please do that with the narcissist because we need you is essentially what they told him because there's not a buttload of therapists on YouTube that are doing what he does. He shares with you not only your diagnosis is not a label and that's it. No, there's a way out of it. There's a way that you can work with your mindset and it's always mine. Like Lisa, the lady who says it's not only the body because <laughs> Bezel talks about the score. She talks about the count. So the brain keeps the count. The body keeps the score. I get to share with you both. And again, enlightenment, the human way is where we get to understand that the heart is here. And I don't always use the word soul or spirit or, or that because you don't need that. Use your human name, use your heart. Feel that it's open, then allow your mind to be open, allow yourself to feel, and then allow yourself to know that the emotions that come up are what wants to be processed by you. And so that's why enlightenment, the path with love is one that is amazing. And the path with humanity in the forefront is also what is amazing. And so sciences and spirituality, they come together in the 5D mystic woo-woo spiritual pseudoscience lady host here. And when we do mentorship, and anything together as well. If you are mystic, as I was trying to say, I will present to you the important mental health hygiene information. And that's because while the spiritual bypassers are all about spiritual bypassing, I'm not. That's the point. Uh, true spirituality knows that life is a meaning and connection beyond the solo self. For your solo self to feel safe to be yourself means that you, your core, your narrative, your relational, your solo, all of the self of you, you can be yourself. That means you can be the Jacob of you. That means you can work with thoughts and emotions. That means when you're triggered, you know how to say, okay, I'm going to manage myself. Then eventually you learn how to manage more. You don't say, I was triggered by you because you spoke these words and I'm going to justify my trigger and me insulting you verbally or the physical, you're going to go to jail. So the part about learning how to handle one's mannerisms is very straightforward and more than just that. Uh, Thank you again for stopping by. We'll be back with more.